Clubs had the action from our first roundup. Queen's Park Rangers were in exhilarating form for 45 minutes against Crystal Palace. Les Ferdinand hit the post, and then when Andrew Impey's deep cross was turned back by Andy Sinton for Gary Penrice to score, it could easily have been the striker's hat-trick. Inspired by Ray Wilkins, Rangers showed skill and confidence all over the pitch. Even goalkeeper Jan Stasekal was moved to join in. Dragged back with the studs that Johan Cruyff wouldn't have disowned. But immediately after half-time, the effervescence lost its zing. Andy Thorne's free kick caught Rangers abdicating responsibility. Eddie McGoldrick equalised. Palace had found new tightness and tenacity. And that brought them an extraordinary second. When Grant Watts played the ball in, Gareth Southgate had an air shot and Chris Armstrong claimed a goal that went in off Impey and the goalkeeper's fingers. An even more remarkable effort completed the scoring. With hindsight, Stasekal may wish he had shown off his footwork again, then perhaps he wouldn't have been caught by a hopeful floater that gave Palace their second successive win and Eddie McGoldrick a valuable seventh goal in the Premier League. I think he tried to dribble it out a few times in the afternoon and uh, he played it short to Clive Wilson. All of them was closed him down and got a block tackle on him. Uh, he actually thought it had gone over, but it was a nice surprise that it dropped in. Are you not on, on some kind of bonus for the number of goals you score? I am, I am, yeah, but I can't disclose any fee at the moment. Are you getting close? Tell me that. <laughs> yes, it's passed now. It's passed. I think uh, two goals today brought me up to it. We defended like women, said older manager Joe Royal. And though feminists and women footballers might protest, you can see what he meant. Neil Ardley opening the scoring for Wimbledon following Vinnie Jones' long throw. Oldham had spent time this week working on defence at set pieces, but any lessons were forgotten as Dean Holdsworth made it 2-0. And if he hadn't scored, Robbie Earle certainly would have. Then a replica of the opening goal. Jones' long throw helped on. Ardley, grateful and gleeful. 3-0. What Joe Royal said at half-time is not hard to imagine, and it had its effect within 16 seconds of the restart. Ian Olney's clip through caught Wimbledon Square and Mark Brennan scored. The revival was brief and deceptive. Two Wimbledon goals in a minute saw to that. Robbie Earle provided the opening for Andy Clark, 4-1, and even the celebration suggested it was getting a bit easy. Then Neil Ardley's cross was not properly cleared before the men at the back moved out. And that left room for Dean Holdsworth to move in, his second of the game after a three-month famine. The slickest move of the game was saved for the last goal. Four men involved, with Mick Milligan needing two attempts to score. 5-2 was Wimbledon's best win in the Premier League. 3,386 was the worst gate anywhere in the new competition. Ipswich Town's unbeaten home record that stretches back nearly nine months was given a jolt by Manchester City. Gary Flipcroft's goal was his first in senior football since he graduated from the FA School of Excellence. The comeback started just before the hour. Neil Thompson's cross was too demanding for Tony Coton and that most consistent of players, Mick Stockwell, scored. Within four minutes, Ipswich were in front. Niall Quinn was on the line to make a long-headed clearance, but only to Gavin Johnson, who returned the ball with an even better header. A free kick two minutes from time settled it. Steve Witten's nod down, Paul Goddard's shot, Ipswich's sixth win of the season. It lifted them to sixth in the table. Gerald, since that reporting, Ray, your Rangers conceding silly goals there. Yeah, we did give away some silly goals this afternoon. As a team, not only defend defenders, but as a team, we're not defending that great. Uh, we had a very, very good first 45 minutes, but full credit to Palace. They worked very hard, got themselves back in the game, and unfortunately for us, they defeated us.
Maybe I'm a little jealous, but Jan Stay School's goalkeeping footballing skills were a bit extravagant, weren't they? Jan is possibly one of the uh, most skillful goalkeepers I've come across, Bob Jan. But he does it every day in training, and uh, he obviously felt he had to do it today. Yeah. I wouldn't have dared do that, I know that. <laughs> Always a lot at stake in the North London derby, but extra pressure today with Spurs and Arsenal seeking to return to winning form after losing their last two and three games respectively. At White Hart Lane, Tony Gubber. It's an occasion when even poor league form can be disregarded and when the nervous intensity of the occasion can affect even the most experienced. Arsenal's Ian Wright coped admirably on his North London derby debuts last season, scoring in both games. But for Tottenham's Teddy Sheringham, it's a new experience. He's Spurs' top scorer this season with seven, but he hasn't found the net in four matches. And Sheringham is one of four in this Tottenham 14 who are facing old rivals Arsenal for the first time. Dean Austin, Neil Ruddock and substitute Nick Barmby are the others. Arsenal have three players tasting this special atmosphere for the first time. The Norwegian pal Leiderson, who's replacing the injured fullback Lee Dixon. Denmark's John Jensen and 19-year-old Ray Parler. Referee Alfie Buchs of Dollis Hill completes an all-London occasion and what a fantastic atmosphere in White Hart Lane for this meeting of old rivals. Arsenal have won here in the league more times than any other visitor and already the first stoppage. Ray Clements full of smiles at the moment. Will it still be the same at 20 to 5? Ilya recovered. Arsenal's free kick. Looking for Campbell. That's Parler. Still Parler. Was he tripped? Alfie Bucks has had a good look at it, but one or two Arsenal players have gone to the official, and that's a controversy in the first few moments. Inquiring looks, no penalty given. Jury. Oh, here's Samways, who nipped in Samways! Well, he was so quick there, Vinny Samways, to nip in and take that. And he might feel that he hit it from further than he needed to. Perhaps he could have gone a little bit further. This is Mabbott. We'll have to use the keeper this time. Oh, there are two on him very quickly. Campbell and then Wright. Oh, good touch by Paul Allen. Terrific touch. Jury's gone out wide on the right. Samways is in the middle. Samways, and wasn't the Norwegian quick? Allen, it's 1 0 Spurs. White Hart Lane erupts. Paul Allen's goal after 20 minutes has given the home side the lead, and that'll be a big disappointment to Leiderson, the Norwegian, who looked as though he'd made a good interception. But Paul Allen was on him in a flash. And what a great goal! He doesn't get many, it's only been 26 for Spurs in some 350 senior games. But one against Arsenal is priceless. Oh, clattering in the back for Teddy Sheringham again from Bold. And maybe that's one tattle too many. And it is a talking point in football at the moment, the tattles from behind, which go right through a player. And, yes... Referee reaching for the book, and despite the explanations about what he was trying to do, the foul has been given, and it's a caution for Steve Bold. Jury! Got a good connection, Gordon Jury. His name is uh, linked with speculation this morning that he may be going to Glasgow Rangers. A shot from well outside the area on the volley. Campbell has it. Threads it through to Ray Parler. Well inside the box and right across the face of goal. Arsenal's best moment. Ray Parler just outside the six-yard box was tattled as he played it across. Merson who came in on the keeper. Ian Wright just off the far post. But it was agonizingly right across the face of goal and behind. 
Adams well forward. Oh, over the top of Rudnick Adams. Oh, great save, and what a great strike by a central defender. Terrific touch by Tony Adams. Thorsfest beat it away from the foot of the post, but what a quality touch this is. Look at that, right over the top of Rudnick, and then he hammered it left foot. And staying up for the corner. Over the top, Parler over the bar. Well, the England defender will have enjoyed that moment, having uh, been out of favour on the England scene for a while, but now re-established. And his recent performances for England have been regarded very favourably. And we're well over the 45 minutes of the first half, and there have been quite a few stoppages for treatment to players. That goes over the top of Campbell. Good cover by Dean Austin. It's Gary Mabbard who's down. Well, this is the incident that's left Gary Mabbard on the floor. It looks innocent enough, a challenge there with Kevin Campbell. Getting back to his feet for the last few seconds that remain of this first half. Now into three minutes of stoppage time. Arsenal will take this corner. Hit long. Bold! Good connection by Steve Bold. Instinctive save by Thorsved, who just pushed it over one-handed. And again, Adams this time. And this time Thorsved came just outside the six-yard box to claim it. But that's it, the whistle has gone. This was a splendid connection by Steve Bold. He got all the forehead behind that. And it was right underneath the crossbar, but right at the keeper. Jensen. Campbell. Still Campbell, kept his balance. Squeezed it out to right. Tried to tee up Winterburn. Fine shot, Winterburn. Thorsvet fumbled it around the post. Arsenal's corner. And he looks as though he's struggling as well, Winterburn. Back in the team today after an injury. And it's the ankle that seems to be giving him trouble. Merson knocks it back. Right misses from in front of goal. That was Arsenal's opportunity to make it level. Ian Wright did exactly that in this fixture last season. He got high, he just didn't get a clean connection. How much are Arsenal missing the services of Alan Smith since he was injured? They haven't won a Premier League game and haven't scored a Premier League goal. Hillier tried to pick out Merson and never got it through to him. Oh, there's a punch thrown there by Ian Wright, which hit David Howell straight on the jaw, and the referee didn't see it. Now, Ian Wright is a very lucky player because he's just thumped David Howells, an incident that the referee didn't see. Austin, still Austin, tees it up, Sheringham missed his kick. Should have scored Teddy Sheringham. Well, the offside flag has gone up. But the incident, which has gone unseen, or has it? Well, the referee is now calling Ian Wright over. Did he see it or did he not? The referee allowed play to continue. He's having a word with... Maybe he saw the aftermath rather than the blow because there was a bit of pushing and shoving. Ian Wright is a very fortunate man. If the referee had seen that, surely he would have had to go because that's a right hand right to the jaw. This is Adams still well forward. That'll be a free kick, fouled by Naeem. Adams didn't complain. And they're still jostling for positions. Adams making a nuisance of himself. Ruddick got on it. That'll be a corner. 
Arsenal now kicking into the end behind which their fans are gathered. Thorsvet drops it. Oh, and it's gone just wide. Well, he looked very casual there, the Norwegian international. He comes off his line, missed it completely, and it came off a Spurs player. Right through his fingers. Sheringham. Winterburn took it off him. Finds Ray Parler. That's Barmby getting back. Still Parler. Good ball through to Merson, now on the right side. Still Merson corner conceded was it not given oh well it's a goal kick and Arsenal a lot alone in wondering about that Merson who burst through and it looks as though it's David Howells who puts that out for the corner well he's enjoyed the afternoon Barmby on a run, he'll get there, still Barmby, oh, off the woodwork! He's got great pace, Nick Barmby, and he always looked as though he'd win that. There was a half suggestion that the fullback, Lydersen, was trying to hold him back at one stage. David Seaman elected to stay where he was, he knew that he wouldn't get there, and that cracked against the top of the bar. There's the extent of Arsenal's commitment for the equaliser. Steve Bold now playing up front as another striker. Right. Right. Bold gives it him back. Still right. Still right. He never got a full connection. But Steve Bold played his part in carving out the chance, having been pushed forward in desperation. Edinburgh, this is Ruddock. That's it. Spurs have won the North London derby by one goal to nil. Paul Allen is the hero. It was never a classic match, and at times the commitment boiled over into one or two incidents that you wouldn't like to see. The referee, well, he was a figure of authority, but not all were happy with all of his decisions. But as it is, Spurs have won by one goal to nil against their neighbours, Arsenal. Well, it's strange. I think this is my, I think, something about my, my 20th uh, derby game. And the thing is, each one seems even more important than the last. And I think it's the same whether it be a Liverpool derby, a Manchester derby. And these games mean so much, not only to the players and the supporters, but everyone throughout the whole club. And, uh, you know, it does mean that to both sets of supporters, this is the game to win. And you know, obviously, a couple of weeks leading up, up to this game, we've both had sort of a torrid time. We've lost the last two, Arsenal lost the last three. So it was important from uh, all our points of view to get a good result in here today. And uh, the fans have been great for this season. We've had a bit of an up and down time, but uh, hopefully today we re repaid them for their support. Around 50 fouls given, five bookings. It wasn't a game for the faint-hearted. I actually thought Arsenal were a bit unlucky to lose. We learn tonight that George Graham, the Arsenal manager, is protesting that he doesn't want Alf Bush to again referee a game this season in an Arsenal game, mainly because I think there should have been two more fouls there. Now, what were your views on... Well, this, is, this happens in the very first minute. Parler does well here. Good control. He goes past Austin. Austin, no way playing the ball. Definite penalty. Perhaps because it was the first minute, he didn't give it. But the rules are the rules. And for me, that was the definite. This is the second one. Merson, a great run. He comes between Howells and Edinburgh. And again, for me, Merson touches the ball forward. And again, a definite penalty. Ray, uh, people talk about home and away decisions and crowd influences on that sort of thing. Yeah, I thought uh, having the, obviously the benefit of watching them on replay, they were both penalties. Alf Bush on the first one was in a very good position to see if uh, Ray Parler was caught, actually. He was right behind him, so he would have had a, a good position there. But obviously you've got a point. Had it been at Highbury, first minute, 
it could well have gone the other way. Now, the referee will get, um, in one way, criticised for that sort of decision or non-decision, but he'll also get criticised for not punishing Ian Wright more severely. Alan? Well, this is incident. He, to be fair to him, I thought he was looking the other way. What to look out for here is Howells and Wright. And really, it's a nothing tackle by Howells. He tackles Wright, and Wright just reacts. He turns, and that's a right hook. And there's no place for that in football. I can't condone it if Howells had tackled him fiercely from behind, but maybe I could understand it. But Howells hasn't touched him, and he's just turned around and hooked him. Now, he's got to learn to control his temper, or he's going to be in big trouble. As a senior citizen of the game, Ray, <laughs> if nice you'll excuse football. that expression. Very nice 46, football. Ray. What advice can you give him? Alan's just said he's got to control it. We know he's got to control that flashpoint. Um, first of all, how can you give him advice? Secondly, is he putting his England career in jeopardy? Well, I personally feel that is unacceptable, what Ian Wright did there. Um, he's been given advice by his own manager. He's been punished by his own manager. And I think it's got to come down to the individual now. He's got to sort himself out. Going on to the second point, if he'd have done that at international level, and there would have been consultation between referee and linesman, he would have been off the field of play. No question about it. Mm. It's a difficult thing, isn't it? Because he's one of those players who people turn around and say, you take this away from him. I don't think that's the right way of saying it. It's you know, not take the right whatever. way of saying it, Bob. You, you know, you've got to take that side away from him. And I think he will improve as a player. Mm. All right. Well, we're going to move on. And uh, Aston Villa are the new 5-2 to two championship favourites. Nottingham Forest are bottom of the league, but with faith restored after last week's startling 4-1 victory over reigning champions Leeds. Team News showed a well-kept secret by Villa. Top scorer Dalian Atkinson out with a groin injury sustained in training. His place taken by 34-year-old Cyril Regis. Ian Wone missing injured for Forrest, so Kingsley Black back in their starting lineup. Commentator at Villa Park, Clive Tilson. Ball won by Teal. Here's for Black. Fox got a foot in. Glover. Now Pierce. Clubbett comes short. Glover's gone beyond him. Here is Nigel Clough. Played through towards Roy Keane. It's a great break for midfield. Spink stayed at home. And Keane makes him regret it. Oh, he's just too hot to handle at the moment, Roy Keane. Another goal with Nottingham Forest written all over it. It's taken nine minutes in coming. The pass and the run were perfection. I was big caught in two minds. Keane just lotted it over the Villa goalkeeper. And that's his fourth goal in his last three games. Barrett. Awkward bounce for Tyler. Awkward position for Crossley. Brilliantly finished by Cyril Regis. 34 years young. Big Cyril has got a goal back for Villa with 11 minutes of the first half remaining. It was a cruel and wicked bounce for Carl Tyler, who has very much had the upper hand against Regis so far. But Cyril had the final word there. Crossley stranded. And immaculately done by the big man. 1-1. One, one. Parker. On to Saunders. Only Regis in the middle for now. Here he is. Gary Parker. Oh! It was a scorcher, wasn't it? Regis. Kick given. Paul McGrath and Sean Taylor on the way. It's in towards McGrath! Ah, oh, it's a beauty. A minute and a half of the second half played. Paul McGrath's first goal in the Premier League puts Aston Villa in front for the first time. And they just seem made for each other. He made it perfectly. The cross was right on the button. And the header was beyond the reach of Mark Crossley. And Villa lead by two goals to one. Black with the corner. Came off the head of Teal. Volley was good from Keane. Just curled a little bit too much.
Barrett's got his foot to so many odds and ends in midfield. He's here again. Keane given straight to Staunton. Barrett made a good run to his left. It's opened up here for Staunton, but on his right foot for the deflection. Almost did the job for him. Saunders, Houghton, Regis, Houghton, lovely play, Gary Parker, oh, almost, Chittle just managed to scramble it clear, Brian Laws completes the job, or has he, Barrett, Gary Parker just denied, going for glory again, not quite as close this time, but uh, Gary Parker, former Nottingham Forest player of course, Almost curling in, uh, beautiful goal there. How do you assess Aston Villa's championship calibre now? The bookmakers say you're the favourites. Well, you know, in championship, it's still a long way to go. There's uh, another half the season. Uh, it's great to be up there, it's great to be favourites. But uh, in football, you know, it's a, it's a long haul. But, but, I mean, the strength of the squad and the all-round look, I mean, is that where your money would go at the moment? Pardon? Is that where your money would go at the moment? Well, we've got to keep going. We've got to keep going. I mean, the lads are playing very well. Uh, the character's good, the spirit's good. Uh, we'll see around about Easter, knocks me then. Well, Cyril's keeping going, Ray. I was rude to you about being a senior citizen. He's 34. Hey, he's just had a nasty Achilles tendon operation as well, Bob. He's done exceptionally well to come back, and it's, it's actually nice to see him doing so well. Good goal, wasn't it? Took it Super well. goal, yeah, great goal. Now, now championship favourites. I mean, he's being realistic, obviously, there, Alan, about Aston Villa, but the bookies are making them favourites. Yeah, they're a good sign. They've, they've come back well after... The Norwich defeated them, and that's, that is a sign of a championship side. You get beaten, you get on a good run. They've won the last two games. Big games to come through. Everybody's beaten each other, and that means every week's a big game. 